Hi everyone, Peter Rick from P2 Design here. In this video, I'd like to show you my progress from the very first time I've started a 3D software and nowadays as a CG director at Atypic Studio and a 3D related content creator. My goal here is to show you that with some hard work, you can do whatever you want and eventually you can leave working with passion on what you like. Long story short, I have a twin sister and a great brother and I was raised in the southwest of France in the countryside of Bordeaux. I wasn't that bad at school but I wasn't good neither and I was a bit lazy. I was obsessed with drawing and miniature painting. And after the general graduation where you have to choose what you will do in your life, uh, my mother understood that I couldn't choose by myself if she wasn't pushing me and she pushed me into the art direction because she understood that that was my stuff. I was accepted into a graphic design school where I met a lot of my friends and we created a collective of artists where we were mainly doing street art and digital art. This was a time where we do a lot of artistic experiments. We had the chance to make some exhibition, some street art and also some little magazines but it wasn't paying the bills so I had to take first job and I enter a little art studio that was linked to a printing factory. While my friend cool to stain and continue, they have become the John Special and they are pretty well known nowadays. I had this first job for a year and I was mainly doing graphic design and a bit of cloth design and the cool thing is that I've also learned a lot about printing process. This was a time where I was still drawing a lot but a year after I was employed, the company go into bankruptcy and I was recruited in Paris in a more technical job. So in this new company, I was working like more than 70 hours a week and it was more a technical pipeline. We were printing and producing corporate goodies and I was in charge of creating the process between the order, the confirmation and the printing production of those products. So it was a time where I I was not drawing anymore. I was still making a bit of art for my uh, metal band because I was doing music at this time. But I was more into production pipeline than anything artistical. And fortunately, I was able to travel a bit in Bulgaria, Germany, in Hong Kong, in China to uh, work on professional related stuff, let's say. And at one point, we started to make custom shaped USB flash drive and the Chinese companies that were working for us were creating 3D renders and I was really amazed that they were able to create those custom shape and make so realistic renders so I was really eager to learn how to do this and this is how I've put a first step into the 3D world uh, learning McNeil Rhinoceros 3D. McNeil Rhinoceros 3D is a full NURBS technical software meaning that it's not like a blender it's not a software where you can really have fun and play with shape. So when I got into this software I read and did the whole documentation and tutorial that goes with the software. I think it was something like 700 pages of tutorial. And then I finally taken a book from AK3D to build an Audi R8 in NURBS from scratch. More than 900 pages of tutorial. At this time, internet wasn't that a thing and it was hard to find. YouTube courses for example. This project took me about 9 months to complete the car and I wasn't even able to render it because my computer couldn't afford such a complex model. It was a good first step into the 3D world for me taking things by the technical side of things based on my background. In the beginning of 2012 I was getting a bit bored at work because I was doing always the same thing and with two friends we had the project to make mobile games because it was becoming a thing at this moment. But since NURBS modeling is not quite the first choice whenever you want to do games, 
I started learning Blender in August 2012. My very first project render, creating Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer by Dave Watts from CG Cookie. I'm, I'm sure some people watching this video will remember this. So after learning the basic of Blender UI with a book, I've dived into this first project. So from there, I walked onto another character and did a little monkey. And in the meantime, I took the Venom Slab DVD from Pablo Vasquez and I worked on the Llama character. At this time I was using mainly polymodeling. I've also rigged my monkey character because at that time I wanted to learn the whole process to be able to create animated shorts on my own. In the meantime with my friend we wanted to create a little shooter for mobile and we started from the end working on a Kickstarter campaign without even developing any ID. So we thought that developing a good marketing and a good teaser will bring us some funds from Kickstarter and allow us to uh, pay the development of the game. So I had to create characters, environment, rigs, animation, FXs, everything almost for this game. It was a failure. Next time, first develop your game and then try to find people to give you money. But I learned a bunch on this project. Then we had another project called Ula Ula, which is a bird with big... I think you will figure it out. We wanted to do a little platformer with the bird and then an app where you could talk to the bird and the monkey and we never finished the project. I took the Piero course from CG Cookie at this time to learn all those things, one of the best courses I've ever taken. At this time I was working like 60 hours a week at my job and maybe 20 hours learning CG at home. Working was kind of my whole life and the only thing at the moment. In mid-2013, in the meantime, I was introducing FUD in my regular job and we were no longer shooting our product, but I was modeling and rendering all of them and I became pretty skilled with art surface modeling in Blender. So this was a time where I could bring Blender into my daily work, so it was a bit exciting. But I was bored from my usual job and I had saved enough, so I decided to quit and give me a year to become a freelancer. Since I had more time, I was motivated to retake my previous project of the Pew Fighter and make more serious designs. This was the first time I got featured on a big website like the CG Society. It was a blast. Then I worked on a character for one of my friend's child. She told me her son loved pirate pigs and I was like, this sounds so crazy cool. In May 2014, I got my first job creating a WebGL website for a web store prototype where you could build and customize your bike in real time 3D. I was also recruited by an indie board game company to design miniatures from one of their games. It was a strategy game taking place in deep space called Events Horizon. Since I was enjoying the project, I proposed to make them some artworks for free to promote their product as soon as I was able to publish them. They accepted and I was contacted like a few weeks later by the Blender Foundation by email. I couldn't believe it to be honest because they were asking me if I wanted my artwork to be featured as Blender 271 splash screen. I immediately said yes, I was just amazed. Two years prior, I've never used Blender and then I was the official splash screen of Blender, the software that pushed me to quit my job and change my life. So 
That was super exciting. I was doing other freelance missions, both in 3D and technical 2D, and I was continuing on making 3D artworks. Whether they were fan art or this piece I did for my little niece, when she was two years old, she loved snails. I was slowly getting more confident, and since I wanted to be a teacher since I was young, I was hoping I could become a 3D instructor at CG Cookie. So I was diving more and more in advanced stuff, or what seems to be advanced at this time, like dynamic wrinkles and driven displacement, and I created my first YouTube videos. Then I worked on this creature where I put a lot of energy in sculpting, rigging and animation, and I was planning to sell it on the Blender market. At this time, I was working for an indie game company creating horror game environment. It was super inspiring, but it didn't pay at all, so I couldn't continue on. In January 2015, fortunately, I got some contract working for marketing companies in the medical industry. While it wasn't super inspiring, I learned a lot about medical stuff and it paid well. I had a decent level on After Effects at this time and in 3D, and since I was still making a bit of music, I was really able to mix sound. Since most of the projects I was working on were video projects, I was able to deal with the whole project, which was a big advantage as a freelancer, allowing me to find missions super easily. From there, life was way easier and comfortable. In August 2015, I started a big and very ambitious personal project. I wanted to make a short movie with an orc as a hero. As you may know, I'm a big Blizzard fan and when I was young, I was reproducing a Warcraft artwork on big pieces of paper. So I started creating the first character on my own as usual. This was also the time I've met my girlfriend and I've created a little artwork for her nephew. I've decided to make a written tutorial about a pipeline between ZBrush and Blender. I've decided it was the time to get the Blender Foundation certifying trainer approval a shot and I got it. I was still hoping to be a part of CG Cookie at this time, but they were not taking any more freelancers. The Throne project was a big project, creating multiple characters. I've also started animating them, creating a storyboard environment and creating more characters. I was overwhelmed and it was too big to be a one-man project, but I learned so much at this time, trying to create realistic muscle deformation, dynamical skin effect, I got featured on the CG Society again and I was printed in a 3D magazine. I was so proud of this and even if the artwork got old, it has been a big moment in my life and pushed me to continue on this path. During summer 2015, I was still doing a lot of freelancing and also running training classes when I did this little time lapse of the bird that got pretty viral. I didn't know it was getting so popular because I wasn't expecting this at all, so I wasn't checking my YouTube channel and stuff like this, but I think it was posted on several different websites and it also got written and featured on different magazines. Then I worked on a new project for a customer that was very interesting. It was an avatar, which was a text that was evolving. I learned a lot. It was a pretty challenging and a big technical project. And I thought it was the right time to start my very first Blender course, the Jack Russell character creation. It was a relative success, but it did bring a bit of money to the table, and it was my very first one, so even if I was hoping for great success, at least it wasn't a failure. On the other hand, this was also a project where I got some rude critics by some people on the internet, and it was the first time I was facing this kind of attitude, so it was a bit disturbing, but in the end, I learned to ignore those, since it wasn't very constructive critique, just ignore them. Then I've attempted my very first likeness portrait of Victor from Underworld. I haven't studied anatomy or stuff like this at this moment, so it wasn't good, but it wasn't that bad neither, I believe. I was still doing a lot of medical stuff 
in my freelancing and I was working for several companies at the same time. So I was pretty successful as a freelancer and I was able to choose the project I was willing to work on, which was a big comfort. I did some character design too. I was pretty active on Beyond and found a cool artwork by Daniel Lustosa of a fantasy world of goats and asked him if I could make it 3D and he accepted. This character was supposed to be just a steel pick, but I couldn't help rigging it and make a little animation, even if he was not modeled and in this regard, the topology wasn't ideal. But I guess since it was fun, it was pretty well received by the critic and I got a 3D Total Excellence award for this one. I was very, very happy about this. Beginning of 2016, I did publish some successful tutorials on my YouTube channel too creating stylized material and assets. Then I gave myself another try at likeness because I was really wanting to progress as an artist. Daniel Craig was a pretty popular actor at the moment with so much charisma. The result wasn't bad again, but, but the likeness and realism was not there. In July 2016, I've already started the production of my Cliff Tower course based on concept and with the agreement of Corentin Chevan, who did work for Disney. The course was a pretty success and was well received and it's still a pretty appreciated course today. It was a long project but I really enjoyed it. And I think I'll make another environment course at some point since I've done a lot of environment these last few years. 2016 was a big year professionally and I physically burnt out at some point collapsing in my toilets. I was working on tons of freelance projects and also working on some personal stuff to improve myself like the creature box character I did. I also got back a bit into industrial design for one of my friends and some customers and I was still training people on Blender. Early 2017 I've had one of the best projects ever with one of my customers creating a character from scratch and then making a shot with it. Even if it wasn't Orkish and Barbarian based project, my customer was super cool and gave me a lot of freedom on this one. I was super proud to be able to run such a project from beginning to the final output and it was nominated at the Susan Awards 2017. I was also contacted by a small indie studio that wanted me to rig an animate character for a new technical MOBA. Since my previous experience with Indie Studio was not that good financially wise, I've accepted to test but didn't engage that much. But the concept art were looking so cool and financially wise, I could afford giving it a try. So I started rigging and animating character for games without any experience and it shows but we were happy of the result at the moment. Since I was really involved into the project, I made some good progress animation wise. And since I was also rigging the characters, animating them pushed me to improve the rigging. It pushed me to analyze other people's rigs and try to make my rigs way better. And this is where I did get convinced that efficacy is better than a lot of features in your rig. In the meantime, I was working for other client and preparing another course, the Dragon Knight course. It was released in November 2017 and I put a lot of energy into this course. It wasn't such a success, but since it pushed me to study a bit anatomy, at least that was a good move. But I did lose a bit of confidence uh, art-wise and also as an instructor at this time. Because I believed it's gonna be big, but you know. <laughs> Life is like that. In 2018, I've been animating super intensively. I wasn't taking that much freelance project anymore, other than my regular customers. And I was mainly focusing on Noara. And I did a lot of progress in animation and ringing. Blender 2.80 was announced and EV was in alpha and we were thinking of creating a teaser for the game and the first book of Noara franchise called The Last Moon. That was a huge challenge creating a teaser on my own based on the story of our CEO the drawing of our character artist in three months. As an industry standard, this was a time where I got back into ZBrush as I wanted to learn more about it. And I've sculpted all the character and asset in it. 
that was a huge one and I spent a lot of my free times on this project, creating 3D assets, animating them and I learned a bunch about creating FXs in After Effects. EV was crashing very often because it was in alpha, but I was so proud to be able to present it during the Blender conference trash talk. I've also made good friends meeting Finn for the first time in real life and Tom from the Shadow Lantern. At the end of the year I was tired but I had the pleasure to model one of the characters for the game. The current characters were getting pretty old and were not optimized and we were planning on remaking them. So I've decided to test myself on this Piranha character and we were all happy with the result and I felt a little more confident in my sculpting skills. Plus, it was a real pleasure to animate this guy. But while I did want to make more character, we first needed to get our own environment and I spent about 4 months working on environment. And I did a lot of rocks, cliffs, trees and textures. Polishing my zebra skill a few months before was a pretty good choice, I must say. What people don't know is that I have recorded about 200 hours of rigging of the Dragon Knight character because I was planning on creating the rigging course back in 2017. But the rig was too extreme and I wasn't able to figure everything out so how to explain those. But after two years of rigging and animating I fixed a lot of problem in my workflow but I felt like the character was getting pretty old and I didn't like it anymore. So in spring 2019, I started working on the Crimson Ronin, a revision of the Dragon Knight. I was really pleased about my progress in anatomy and general appeal of the character. Even if today I see a lot of mistake and I can't wait to create a new character. Then I had the chance to work on another character for Noara, so I felt my level was a bit off limit for our character design, but at least I set the quality level and I did set the workflow. From there we had the chance to recruit a super motivated junior and we are now sculpting together and making a lot of progress on character sculpting thanks to Alexander Renault, aka Spoon, our concept artist. Having the chance to work with other talented artists really help to pull your level up and that's a big chance I have. In the meantime, I did rig the Crimson Run in character and started the production of my latest course. I did change my production pipeline and quality level thanks to Jan Sculpt and Zach Reinhardt. They really bring me a lot of good advices on how to record my tutorial. The course was released on November 2019 and it was a huge success. I got a lot of attention from there after all these years of preparation. Then I've sculpted the crab character and here I felt how much I've progressed with sculpting as I did this guy in 4 or 5 days from start to final texturing and rigging. And I really enjoy his shapes and appeal. At the moment I was so fascinated by animation I was searching for as much references as I can found and got pushed toward Richard Lico by a colleague Yuri Montero from Amplify Studio. His course was such a revolution in my mind and I decided to ask him if I could rig his character so that Blender users could follow his course too and he accepted. It was one of the most exciting and humbling day in my life being able to talk and share with such a legendary and kind animator. From there I've been mostly animating and creating ringing and animation content. My latest artwork may not be the most impressive because I did it to make a beginner friendly tutorial. But if you've told me 9 years ago I would be able to output a render animation like that from scratch in less than 6 hours. I wouldn't have believed you. One thing I've learned all these years is that if you're passionate and you put energy in what you like, you will progress and everything is possible. But it takes time, it takes thousands of hours of hard working. This year I've started learning how to draw again because I want to progress. So let's see what are my progress in 8 years. One last thing I'd like to add is that I feel so lucky I had such a supportive family that has given me the chance to choose my path. This is invaluable, so if you can choose, don't waste your chance. I'll see you in the next video.